community ownership is actually central to sustainable long-term impact. Provide the framework, yeah. and then it's kind of like the outline of the painting. Yeah. Then people can fill in their own colors. Hi, I'm Shahid. I'm the co-founder and co-CEO at Nora Health. Hi, I'm Safina Hussain, and I educate girls. I think working with communities uh, is absolutely the core of everything that we do, right? Because our work is about going door to door and finding out of school girls, convincing their parents, convincing neighborhoods, convincing the village leadership that these girls should actually be back in school. Everything is rooted around the community. And from that lens, I think from even building the model, for us to have community ownership was absolutely key. Like it had to be owned by the community, led by the community. And that's what led to us building this army of over 20,000 gender champions called Team Balika, right? So that everything is always hooked and led by them. Our Team Balika's slogan for themselves is, you know, my village, my problem, and I am the solution. Because that mindset shift and that norm shift is not going to happen mm -hmm. unless it is owned by them. How do you see that whole thing playing out? Because I think it's very similar in your model as well. Absolutely. Maybe the, the parallel to that is our, our local healthcare workers. Each of those healthcare workers that we work with is a key focal point for that community. And there's a lot of trust that the community places in that healthcare worker. And what we're trying to do is equip them with some tools, some skills, and technology that supports them in supporting the patients and families better. But they know all the answers. They know what, what their communities need. And so the question for us is how do we how do we understand that? And how do we gather that information, contextualize it, and support them in a way where uh, you know, this, is, this is theirs? The solutions you get to are just much more elegant in a way. Provide the framework, yeah. and then it's kind of like the outline of the painting, yeah. then people can fill in their own colors. Yeah, I'll, I'll add one, one little story in, in terms of the layer of that beauty. I had visited a health and wellness center, which is a small clinic in a village called Kisara and was speaking to the, the community health officer there and, and asking them, okay, what do you think about this program? And what she answered was, this is my program. I created <laughs> it. I was there when, uh, <laughs> yeah. and so, you know, she didn't see this as an organization, Nora Health or, or me coming in and asking about a program that I created and, and what do they think about it? But, but she said, this is mine. And I think that, that set it apart for me. This is funny you mentioned that <laughs> because when I was first starting out, I had a, I had a funder and he came to the field, uh, you know, to see our work. And he went to one school and then, you know, similar kind of thing, right? Everybody's running around saying, oh, look, we built the toilet and we did this and we did that and whatever. And, uh, and then eventually, like after two days, he sat me down and he said, Safina, take me somewhere where they say that you guys have done this. And we're like, I think you're totally missing the point here. Yeah. <laughs> The idea is not for the community to be thanking us saying they came and they did this. It's for us to play that catalytic role, that they themselves own it and they are proud of it and they're running with that. Uh, you know, I was, and it's, it's such a mindset shift sometimes that you need even donors to have, saying that community ownership is actually central to sustainable long-term impact. It's the intentionality of the money is what determines how deep you can go, how you can really pick up the most difficult problems and solve them in a systematic way, rather than you know shortcuts and saying, I built this thing and it's now going to scale to millions and the job is done, you know, or whatever. Um, and I think that's really important to remember. It is that tail that wags the dog. A lot of young people today want to have purpose in their life. They want to be able to make a difference. You know, how would you, what advice would you give them? I think the, the advice I would give is what brought me to and what kept me in this work, which is connection and, and just going out and, and really finding it doesn't, for me, it was a hospital. <laughs> I was a medical student at the time, so that, that felt like, you know, the world. But, uh, but whatever that place or that, you know, purposeful environment is for you, go and make a connection. And, and that is the beginning then. Um, and for me, it, it, transform my life to, to focus on those connections. Uh, but it wouldn't have happened if I didn't take a moment to really go deep in talking to some patients and families that, that I met in the hallways and the corridors of, of different hospitals and really understanding what they were going through. And in that, 
I saw a lot of beauty, even though when I, if I, if I took a step back and I looked at what I saw, which was a lot of worry, a lot of anxiety, a lot of overcrowding in healthcare facilities, um, and not knowing what's going to happen to the patient. When I actually went in and I talked and I, and I understood what was happening, I saw a lot of beauty in the care that each family member was providing a patient, and. And that beauty is what attracted me to the work, not a despair, not something that was going wrong or a problem that I wanted to solve, but rather the beauty that I, that I saw and that connection that I made. So, yeah, find the connection. Absolutely, completely.